First, oral awareness is intensely local in its orientation. Without the many communication technologies recently spawned by the printed word, without the ability such media have to bring us into contact with far-off places, indigenous oral awareness is much more deeply informed by the immediately surrounding locale than most modern folks can even imagine. In the absence of intervening technologies, our senses, co-evolved for millions of years with the textures, colors, and sounds of surrounding nature, spontaneously couple themselves to shapes and dynamic patterns in the living landscape, tracking those patterns as they metamorphose through the seasons, the leafing time of the local trees, the rhythm of bud and blossom and fruit, the reticence of various animals in certain months, and their antic exuberance in others. All these unfolding in the immediate environs provide a set of sensuous metaphors for the complex pulse of our own emotions and a basic template for our cognitions. The human animal is a creature of imagination to be sure, yet our imagination is first provoked and infused by the earthly place where we dwell or by the wider terrain wherein we circulate. Indigenous oral intelligence is place-based intelligence, an awareness infused by the local terrain. Second, the simple act of perception is experienced as an interchange between oneself and that which one perceives, as a meeting, a participation, a communion between beings. For each thing that we sense is assumed to be sensitive in its own right, able to feel and respond to the beings around it, and to us. Third, each perceived presence is felt to have its own dynamism, its own pulse, its own active agency in the world. Each phenomenon has the ability to affect and influence the space around it, and the other beings in its vicinity. Every perceived thing, in other words, is felt to be animate, to be, at least potentially, alive. Death itself is more a transformation than a state. A dying organism becomes part of the wilder life that surrounds it. As the hollowed-out trunk of a fallen tree feeds back into the broader metabolism of the forest, there is thus no clear divide between that which is animate and that which is inanimate. Rather, to the oral awareness, everything is animate, everything moves. It's just that some things, like granite boulders, move much slower than other things, like crows or crickets. There are only these different speeds and styles of movement, these divergent rhythms and rates of pulsation, these many different ways of being alive. The surrounding world, then, is experienced less as a collection of objects than as a community of active agents or subjects. Indeed, every human community would seem to be nested within a wider, more-than-human community of beings.